Sometimes, games go too far with their mechanics. They can be clumsy and poorly implemented. But have no fear. Here at the Dead Unicorn, we've been working hard testing ideas in our custom dice laboratory to make bad systems good. Joining me today is the voice of Tarek. I see all. I know all. Today, we'll be plucking at the strings of a certain rule that has the dice gods cursing us every single game. And that system revolves around opportunities in the L5R or Legends of the Five Rings role-playing game. As some of you may know, we here at the Order of the Dead Unicorn have been playing L5R on stream as part of our Cyber Samurai Saturdays for the last few weeks, and have been putting its rule set through the pieces in order to gain a better handle on all things samurai. In that time, we have come to realize that the specific system implemented by Fantasy Flight Games called Opportunity has not lived up to its end of the bargain needlessly overcomplicating the game and bogging down otherwise smooth roleplay opportunities. Uh, two opportunity water. with water. water. And that was page uh, 223? 30, 38, I yes. think? 238? Uh, before we move on, I'm sure some of you want to know just what are opportunities? This rule is in several Fantasy Flight games going by the name of Advantage in Genesis and the Star Wars RPG, and Opportunity in Legend of the Five Rings. It's a narrative tool built into the dice, and it does not denote success or failure, but instead offers another positive thing that can happen to the character in the course of play. It can be used to make a scene more cinematic, push forward the story even if the characters fail, or add new interesting things to a scene. Unfortunately, there's also a huge drawback. It can drag on a game and pull it down to a standstill as players begin to look through all of their charts and abilities in order to figure out how to use their opportunities most effectively. We've come up with a few ideas on how to expedite this process. That's right. You might want to take one or two of these ideas that you find to be your favorites and try implementing them in your game. Since we've been playing Legend of the Five Rings, we'll be focusing on that game franchise specifically. But certainly, you can use these ideas for any system. Now on to the fixes! An experienced character has many abilities they can activate with their opportunities. Their skills, techniques, and then just the general table of opportunity use. When you make your roll, you might be overwhelmed with the options. Then the game comes to a crashing halt as you're looking through your character sheet and book desperately searching for that extra advantage. Tarek, how can we get this game moving again? Quick answer, prepare for your actions. There is a good deal of time, especially during combat, where other players are taking their turn, in which you as a player can seize the initiative and plan for your turn. You know this is generally a good idea in any RPG. A player can't always do this effectively. The battle can change and you may have an idea for an action you want to perform that may be, well, inventive. And then you have to ask your GM if it can even be attempted. But having a plan is always a good idea. Players need to be informed about what their characters are capable of doing and how they want to do it. But that's really only half of the equation here. Even if you know what you can do and what you want to do, there are still occasions where the potential of your action and the reality of your dice rolls will not meet together cleanly. This is where problems occur that cannot be handled by simple preparation. So, I have a bunch of opportunity in front of me. The GM has allowed me to spend them on my abilities, but I really have nothing. So what now? Now it's time for the GM to take back control of the flow of the game. This entails weaving together narrative elements of the game based on the player's actions and the intent of those actions. Take that opportunity and begin to narrate the actions as described by your players in an appropriate and interesting way. This does not need to be tied to any particular player. It simply must be something interesting that adds to the drama or gravity of the scene. You can take the amount of opportunity rolled into account, or just add something you think might fit best in that moment, despite whatever results might be present on the dice. You lunge forward with your sword, but unfortunately, 
you do not have enough successes to hit. Your opponent knocks your sword away and it scrapes against the stone, making a wave of sparks that catch the tapestries on fire. While this could add an extra intriguing layer of suspense to your game, it can also wear out your game mastery goodness and could even drain your creativity. So instead, there are some solutions that are less dramatic, but can still give key help to players whose stories can move along more swiftly. These options could end up with your player noticing an extra detail within a scene that may give way to a helpful story beat or clue, or simply add more flair to their actions that they're looking to take. You've tried to make opportunities as interesting as possible, but things are slowly getting absurd. These narrative additions only serve as a distraction to the story rather than helping it along. Now what do you do? There are several ways to help your players use opportunities in order to move the narrative along. These are usually in the form of bonuses to the character, but they do not always have to be. The first I can think of, let's call the tiebreaker scenario, where there are many situations in a game that can call for contested skill checks. These can become headache factories that will instantly bog down the flow of a scene and cause numerous consecutive skill checks that could involve multiple players and even multiple NPCs. This issue can get so bad. Even the game designers created a whole different form of combat called social combat or intrigues in order to handle the flow of these cluster. Why? Just why? No one needs to declare a combat stance in order to deliver a substantive argument. Just no. No one's getting in horse stance to rebut your proposals. Instead, why not simplify these rules and allow for the character to have a bit more narrative focus alongside their skill checks? Again, this calls on the game master to take control of the scene and continue to move it along in a productive manner. Maybe your player failed his contested skill roll, but had a number of opportunities as a part of it. Good! Then maybe the other NPCs, or even perhaps the PCs, don't catch on to the fact that his argument doesn't hold much water, or his perceptive capabilities weren't quite up to snuff. So you're saying that, if I fail a roll, but I have opportunities, I can hide the fact that I failed? I'm sure this doesn't work in all circumstances, but I can see the value in it. I'd go ahead and make a hard and fast rule. For example, Anyone with an air equal to or more than the number of opportunities sees through the ploy. Did your player fail to meet the challenge completely, or just fall a bit too short? Maybe they missed a critical roll by only a single success. That is always going to sting in the mouths of your players. This is a situation that can also lead to dramatic consequences in a game and leave players feeling less than heroic. In these situations, sometimes it's okay to just fail. But should the character have a few extra opportunities lying around, maybe that gives them the edge to gather some new insight into a problem, or give them a new perspective on how to attack the big bad one last time. Should a player have at least two opportunities to spend on a failed check, and only need one more success in order to pass, why not let them do it? They found a weakness in their opponent's defenses, or perhaps remembered a clue that seemed useless before, but now it makes all the difference to the PC, allowing them to seize victory from the jaws of defeat. The problem here is consistency. If you allow opportunity to be used as success during critical times, but not during any time, some might accuse the GM of playing favorites. You can do two things to mitigate this. First, say this option is only available to game critical roles, those that need to be made to further the story. Or, if you want to use it more often, you might give this ability an extra cost. Sure, it can give you that extra oomph, but it puts strain on your body, costing two fatigue, or the action causes stress giving you four strife, or it can be only done by spending a void point. Okay, okay, last one. Let's say your player failed big time. Perhaps not in a critical moment, but on a given task that they were attempting, but happened to roll a few more opportunities than they did successes. Well, I think that should still count for something. And though it may not turn a current failure into a current success, let your player character learn something from this failure. A neat idea for spending opportunity on an otherwise failed roll could garner the character a success on a future roll for the same type of task. Maybe you want the player to have an extra success on a future related skill check 
or maybe more generously, allow the character to have this success carry over into any skill within a skill group or a skill check related to a specific ring used during their failed attempt. This could also be used as a way to allow your characters to reattempt a skill check at a later time. Maybe they need to take a quick break and think things through before trying the check again, this time with a clear head. I think that about covers it, but I'm sure there are many more ways to use opportunities. If you have ideas, we'd love to hear about you. Just leave us a comment. I'm always looking for new ways to make the game better. And in the same vein, I'd like everyone to join us in the Order of the Dead Unicorn on Patreon. Patreon helps fund these videos, but unlike other YouTube channels, our Holy Order gives you something more than just videos for your contribution. Every month, our $5 pledge will receive a special gift in the way of a role-playing adventure or supplement. The first of which is Party Crashers, in which a tribe of goblins overruns a beer garden during the opening celebration. Yes, the goblins are drunk, and they will be throwing pies at the PCs. And if that doesn't tickle your fancy, you can still click the like on this video and subscribe for more role-playing ideas and live streams. Thanks for watching, and remember, all hail the Order of the Dead Unicorn!